Kidneys are very important organ in the body. Uh, they are as important as uh, your heart and lungs. Um, although they are very small organ, 11 to 12 centimeters, but they carry about 20% of your blood work, the, what we call as cardiac output, heart output through the kidney. And in a minute, uh, one liter of blood um, flows through the kidney. So absolutely they are the probably as important as uh, your heart and lungs. The main uh, functions of the kidneys are water balance and it removes the waste product from the body and it also maintains the balance of minerals such as sodium, potassium and chloride and bicarbonate which is an acid balance and also um, maintains the uh, controls the production of hemoglobin through production of hormones called erythropoietin in the kidney. The causes of chronic kidney diseases are type 2 diabetes which is increasing in incidence in this community, second is high blood pressure, third is inflammation of the kidney caused as glomerulonephritis, fourth is kidney diseases which run in family called as hereditary nephritis and fifth is uh, other causes such as drugs, uh, both herbal medications and our medications which we use such as um, antibiotic, uh, anti-inflammatory. In some cases, there is another form of kidney failure, which is called acute kidney injury. This is where there is an abrupt or sudden loss of kidney function that generally occurs within 48 hours. Causes of acute kidney injury can be many, but the main ones are due to decreased blood flow by way of extremely low blood pressure, kidney exposure to harmful substances or toxins, inflammation of the kidney, and an obstruction of the urine flow caused by an enlarged prostate. More importantly to note, patients with an acute kidney injury are at higher risk of developing chronic kidney disease. While chronic kidney disease can affect anyone at any age, there are certain ethnic populations that are more prone than others. Individuals from South Asian, Caribbean, and Latin American countries are some of the highest populations affected by it. If you have a stage one kidney disease, you may not have any symptoms, but there may be a, some blood in the urine, there may be foaming of the urine, there may, there may be a rise in blood pressure uh, and puffiness of the eyes, that can be the symptom. But if as the kidney disease advances, the client will feel weak, they may have some itching of the body, they may have some nausea, vomiting, or loss of appetite, loss of weight, uh, loss of concentration, s sleeping too much, and uh, some fluid over the lungs, chest pain. And when the kidney fail completely, uh, when you need uh, dialysis, then there is a, what we call as renal replacement therapy uh, can be situated, which is a dialysis or kidney transplantation. Kidney transplant offers a lot of advantages to the patient. It is considered the best treatment for kidney failure. It offers patients freedom from dialysis. They do not have to show up daily for their dialysis treatments. It offers better quality of life, less risk of dying from kidney disease, and in general, you know, diet is less restrictive, no vascular access is needed, better sexuality, and overall leading a better productive life. Patients do not get automatically put on a waiting list. They need to go through a thorough medical evaluation. They need to be referred to the transplant center by their own nephrologist uh, to get the workup going. And once that's complete, then they can be listed for kidney transplant. Some patients will not qualify for renal transplantation. So some of the patients who are older and have severe heart or vascular disease, they're actually better off staying on dialysis than going for a transplant. And then there are some absolute contraindications. So people who have mental illness, who are in, unable to take their medications on time, if they've demonstrated poor compliance with their dialysis treatments. And then there are other things like if they have uh, active or uh, recently treated cancer, if there is ongoing substance abuse, if they have a chronic illness that can lead to death within a few years um, should not undergo transplantation. The donor kidney can come from two sources. Uh, one is the living donor um, and the other one is the deceased or the dead donor. So a living donor could be anyone. It could be your family, relative, friend, neighbor, um, or anyone from church, anyone you know. Um, living donor can also come from someone the patient may not even know. So we have some altruistic donors come forward and donate a kidney uh, to the first patient on the transplant list. Unfortunately, there is a long waiting list uh, due to shortage of the available transplantable organs. 
Um, so waiting time depends on the blood group. So blood group A and AB have the shortest wait time, and that is uh, usually from three to five years. Blood group O is the next on the list, and that has the wait time of five to seven years. And blood group B has the longest wait time, and that can go up to eight to nine years. Dialysis, another form of renal replacement therapy, is simply an artificial way of removing waste and excess water from a patient's blood as a normal functioning kidney would. Dialysis is of uh, different types uh, and the two types of dialysis which we call as independent dialysis which includes peritoneal dialysis which is patient's own body is used as a filter and cleaning agent um, and the second is uh, home hemodialysis which a patient uh, does the hemodialysis which is sort of where a artificial machine and filters are used and uh, a access is created on, in patient and patient can dialyze at home with the help of family and then we have in center dialysis where patient comes to hospital three times a week spends four to five hours and being dialyzed and the last dialysis which we have instituted recently in our institution is an in-center nocturnal dialysis where a patient comes in the night, slow dialysis, stays for six hours in the hospital and sleeps and goes in the morning to his usual physical activity. In some cases, palliative care is chosen by patients where no treatment is requested and the patient lets their disease run its course naturally with the support of their family and healthcare team providing care along the way. And when we talk to patients generally, our practice is that we talk about dialysis and we talk about palliative care of uh, kidney disease, which is a becoming actually a very important uh, topic in uh, modern kidney disease medicine, where patient has every right to not to go on dialysis. There is a small amount of patients that choose conservative or palliative management in their kidney disease. They have um, felt that they've lived a good life, they have chosen not to start dialysis and to let um, the disease, they will follow the progression of the disease. They will still be followed at the clinic, but they will not have dialysis and they will eventually pass away from the disease. It is the duty of our team, and we do provide that, that the patient still should be cared and the family should be helped through that difficult process. The focus of this video will be on dialysis and more specifically the benefits of dialysis at home. Apart from the life-giving benefits, it offers hope, freedom, and a level of independence to those affected with chronic kidney disease, as you will soon learn. However, most patients, when first learning about their diagnosis and starting dialysis, face some initial fears and emotional challenges, along with lifestyle changes and potential impact on their immediate family. I got ill very quickly, so I was very, very healthy, and then three weeks later in the hospital, uh, in the hospital for almost three weeks. So for me it was a bit of a fog at the beginning. It's a little bit harder to um, be able to convey not only what kidney disease is in someone who's presenting to you for the first time at a later stage in their disease and to also tell them, you know, you need to start pretty soon. It's quite shocking for patients and most of them are, are not accepting of their illness because of all the information that gets given to them at the time and the decisions they need to be faced with very rapidly. Most of the time their concerns are it's a big loss or it's a grieving process because all of a sudden they, they, their kidney used to work well and all of a sudden their kidney is sick. For me the hardest part is for me to accept that I have a, a disease and you know if you look at my medical charts it says end stage renal disease and I don't even like thinking of that. They are emotionally, they feel they are challenged and uh, they don't know how to deal and how to cope with that situation. I had to control uh, uh, my emotions so that the others around me are not affected so severely as I was. The biggest challenge for me, and I told this to Dr. Sapir, was that going on dialysis was going to be like almost going on jail for me. Chronic kidney disease is not just a patient's journey, it's also a family and a partner journey because obviously it's a chronic condition that affects not only the patients but also their families. So they are unsure of what's going to happen to their loved one. You know, they're going to have to go on dialysis. As we know, this is a treatment that they have for the rest of their life. They worry about how they're going to fit it into their lifestyle, how their mom or dad or their family member is going to feel on dialysis and how they'll be able to help and support them on this journey. They have to understand they have a kidney disease where they have to live. 
changes are in the diet, somewhat in the lifestyle also, that, uh, and the social aspects are affected if they go on dialysis. But for whole chronic kidney disease from stage one to stage five, the most important thing is that they have lifestyle changes. The key is prevention. So to manage your disease before things progress. So managing your blood pressure, managing diabetes, taking care of yourself, um, getting frequent health checkups, and not ignoring your health is the most important thing. So start before it is too late.